millions and millions of miles away, an alien craft waits to deliver its deadly rays to our Earth. With a magnetic field that can disrupt telephone communications, computer transmissions, even your ability to watch MTV. Talk about a heat wave. It's a nuclear ball that's 10,500 degrees hot. Its energy field travels 93 million miles in less than nine minutes through darkness and interplanetary storms. Dodging meteors, sideswiping shooting stars, blasting through holes in the ozone layer. And every day... They're here! But wait, we're talking about the sun, right? Good day, sunshine. It gives us life, grows food, keeps us warm, all that good stuff. Here comes the sun. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. Sure it's hot, but it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's all that and more. But there can be too much of a good thing. And when that happens, it isn't good at all. Fact is, there's a dark side to the sun. And it's something all of us need to be aware of and protect ourselves from. You need to practice safe sun. Because no matter how tempting it is to lay out in the backyard, or swim at the beach, or play ball, or ski or snowboard, or drive around with the top down, too much exposure to the sun can be a problem. Now, this isn't about grown-ups keeping you from a fun time. It's about doing something for yourself and taking some easy precautions. No big whoop. But a lot of you are probably saying, I don't always wear sunblock. I'm just so white, I need sun, so I don't even worry about suntan lotion. People who are considered pretty are always the people who are tan. I don't really cover up because it's summer and it's hot. <laughs> Look, your body needs the sun. About 20 minutes a day to produce natural vitamin D that helps your heart and immune system. But don't overdo it. Fact is, everybody's skin can get damaged, whether yours is light or dark. And whether you burn or just tan, you're doing damage. When your skin feels a little bit tight, turns red, it's not just uncomfortable. Worst case is that it leads to a skin cancer called melanoma. So you know, they don't call it a killer tan for nothing. I'll worry about that when I'm like much older, like 40. I'll probably worry more in the future, but right now, I don't care that much. You figure when you're older, that's when you need to start worrying about, you know, sun exposure and stuff. Right now, you think it's okay? Don't be so sure. Melanoma is the leading cause of death among women in their late 20s. And guys, nearly every hour, someone in the U.S. dies from it. But how about if you could get a little color now, look good, and not have to worry about how you look or feel later on? That's pretty cool. That would be good, too. First thing is to skip the SPF 20, nowhere near good enough. Go for the SPF 45. Put it on about 20 to 30 minutes before you go out, even on a cloudy day. And make sure to reapply every couple of hours, especially if you're spending time in the water or sweating. Look, don't look at it as goopy suntan stuff. Think of it as moisturizing cream, kind of like conditioner takes care of your hair. And don't forget to use lip balm on your lips. They can dry out easily and get chapped, and well, you get the picture. The point is, you wouldn't stare into the bright sun without sunglasses. So just consider sunscreen as sunglasses for your skin. What about that color you promised me? With SPF 45, you'll get some color, but there's another way to get even more color. Look at today's stars in TV, in movies, in People magazine. You don't see Nicole Kidman, Renee Zellweger, J-Lo, or Beyonce with deep, dark tans. They're smart about their skin tone. And when they want or need color, they don't risk baking in the sun. I think they go to tanning salons. No, no, no. They spread or spray on a self-tanning lotion and get good-looking color without harming the skin. Everybody's doing it, and magazines everywhere like Entertainment Weekly and Teen Vogue are not only saying it's the big thing, but the only safe way to get a tan. Basically every girl in our grade goes to tanning salons. They went to the tanning bed and it just like didn't look natural. They look all peeled and stuff and they're covering up every part of their body that skin is dry and stuff from. Their skin got like all wrinkly and blotchy in some places and just looked bad. I find it funny. <laughs> <laughs>
Think about it. In most tanning salons, you have this concentrated dose of ultraviolet light from bulbs almost touching your skin. Talk about damage. You don't even have 93 million miles to filter some of the rays. No wonder most states plus towns and counties all over are banning tanning beds and booths or regulating them very carefully. So if you're a real tanorexic and you gotta have color even year round, the sunless tanning lotion is really the only safe way to go. Nice tan in two seconds. But the real dark side of the sun? It's just too easy to get a kind of cancer, melanoma, when you don't take care of yourself. And it's more likely that you'll get a melanoma than lots of other things. Being struck by lightning, the odds are 1 in 6,000. A shark attack, 1 in 150 million. But the odds of getting a melanoma are just 1 in 79. And getting some kind of skin cancer is 1 in 5 and getting more and more possible all the time, especially if you've ever had just two or three blistering sunburns. So look around and do the math. It's not something that happens to someone else. It could happen to you. That's exactly what happened to Molly Begain, a teenager like you who grew up around here. She had so many friends. She really loved her friends. Molly had a great sense of humor. She was just hysterical. Actually, there was this one time I was going to the gas station with her and she was like, Oh, Cara, do you have any money on you after we filled it up? I said, No. She's like, Neither do I. And so she goes to the guy, Do you mind if I just leave her here while I go home and get money? I thought she'd be back in about 10 minutes. And she came back close to an hour later. <laughs> and was like, Oh, sorry, I just had to do a few things. <laughs> I was the big sister, so I was always babysitting and I go to rent a movie and I'd come home and she'd have 30 people at the house and have a party. <laughs> she was an outdoor person. She loved like running around, being athletic, had a lot of energy. She was always concerned with keeping herself out of the sun actually. Sunbathing was not something that she did. She had a mole in the inside of her thigh and I think that she was kind of like afraid. She knew it wasn't right. So I think she just wanted to avoid it and hope it went away. That's when she went and got it checked out. Unfortunately, it wasn't checked out earlier, but she didn't know that. I wouldn't have known either before this. Like, if I had a, a mole that looked weird, I probably wouldn't have rushed to a doctor. I didn't even know what melanoma was before. After going through four rounds of chemotherapy and after having surgeries and radiation and all that stress, it was six months from the diagnosis in April until November 1st, she passed away. She was at school, going out. She was still doing everything that she was doing. No one would have known. She hadn't felt sick or looked sick from the outside that would suggest that something was wrong. When you just tell people the story about Molly, it just stuns a lot of people because they don't know that that's possible. And it's scary. And especially when you realize that you have some control of taking care of yourself. So that's why it's just really important to be aware of your moles or go to the dermatologist so they can look out for you. It's a quick checkup. It's about 10 minutes. You see a doctor and he goes over your skin and can, he's able to tell. Watching out for yourself is the most important thing and there are ways to prevent it and catching it early. If it was caught early, things could have been different. We, we had always avoided. had hope the whole time. Yeah, we... and Molly did too. If Molly were alive today, she would be 25. So what can you do to prevent melanoma or other skin cancers? Start by avoiding constant exposure to the sun, particularly from 11 to 3. And remember, you can get a tan or even a burn on a cloudy day, even in the middle of winter. So take along your own shade, like a hat with a wide brim, tightly knit shirts or tops that have sleeves you can roll down, sunglasses, and of course, don't skimp on the sunscreen. As we've said, the idea isn't to avoid the sun, just to practice safe sun. The next important thing is to look at yourself in the mirror, your whole body, and see what's looking back at you. A melanoma can start growing anywhere. And because you can't see everywhere, ask a friend or family member to help. 
Can you check what I can't check? Yeah. You're looking for a mark that wasn't there a couple of months ago. It could be anywhere, like the backs of your legs, on your scalp, even the bottoms of your feet. And if you do find something, getting to a doctor can make a life or death difference. Good, thank you. What you're looking for are moles. Some people are just predisposed to having them. And most of the time, a mole or birthmark or freckle is perfectly natural and just makes you, you. But others spell trouble. And they're spelled A, B, C, D, E. A is for asymmetry. If your mole is round, no problem. But if they're irregular in shape, that could be a problem. B is for border. Again, if your mole has smooth, even edges, that's okay. But melanoma lesions often are uneven. So be on the lookout for something like this. C is for color. Most normal or benign moles are a single shade of brown, but a melanoma often shows up in many shades of brown, even black. D stands for diameter. Most marks are about the size of a pencil eraser or smaller. Melanoma lesions, even in their early stages, tend to be bigger. E is for evolving. Moles shouldn't grow. If they do, they usually spell problems. You can even use your digital camera to take pictures of your skin. Like a personal inventory of moles and freckles. So when you check from month to month, you can see if there's something that wasn't there before. If you pass this test, that's terrific. But keep checking every month, because melanoma cells have this nasty habit of jumping around under your skin and popping up someplace new. And it wouldn't hurt to see a dermatologist regularly, just to be sure. If you do find something, or if you feel any pain or tenderness, or worse, see any bleeding or oozing from the mole, get to a doctor immediately. Don't wait a week. Don't wait a day. Get examined now. Make sure you get the right treatment. Look, all of this may seem like a lot and you've got plenty of things on your mind, but think about this. The vast majority of people who get skin cancer at whatever age usually get it because they don't take care of themselves when they were your age. There's no such thing as a safe tan. And 80% of all sun damage happens before you're 25. Even if you're a person who thinks that you've already been in the sun for too long and you have too much damage, it's never too late to start caring about it now and start use it, protecting yourself. Even if you're a person who thinks that this wouldn't be a problem for you because you have darker skin or because you have always used sunblock, you still really should be aware and go to a dermatologist because it can happen to anybody. It's never too late. It can save your life. This year, all year, be cool, look good, and be safe. Yeah, the sun is your friend, but it also has that dark side. So keep it at a safe distance. Molly's my sister, my younger sister. She died at age 20. We'll always remember her as a beautiful, fun-loving person. We wish she were here today. We miss her a lot.